next best thing. But of course, uh, it struggles into a lot of the early aggression in the format right now. But with Mew, perhaps that's the deck that it can really shine and show what it's capable of. Taking down big three prize Pokemon with a lot of hit points, Shen Pao is more than capable yeah. of facing off against this Mew VMAX. Oh, with two paths to the peak prize, that's not preferable. Uh, either will be wanting to look to attempt to kind of strangle Jacob out of not having enough energy to make those big KOs. But here we go with Jacob taking the first turn. Round seven at the Liverpool Regional. Win and in. Either of these players get the victory here. They are guaranteed day two and have a few games to play with to try and increase their record. And if not, they still have a few more chances to do so. It's not over for them, but they'd love to get it sorted now to take the pressure off. Yeah, honestly, it would be lovely for both of them and also puts them in a higher seeding in day two if they continue to do well. I think there's still all the reason to keep playing and keep smashing all of the matchups that you possibly can. And we're going for a, a nice uh, shivery chilling over here with Chen Pao. No stress, just trying to do some winning. Grabbing two energy from the deck. Get started. That's the way to do it. But is there a way to get a fridge back down? There it is. And with the way Mew VMAX works as a deck, that Frigibax will be uh, safe for, for a turn. For now, yes, indeed. At the very least, this build of Mew VMAX, which um, I, I know very well. I know this 60, so uh, we don't have Meloetta. Uh, but this is what I would call a hybrid version of Mew VMAX. Uh, that's what I've been calling it at home, where it's kind of half fusion, half DTE. Yeah, allowing you to get around that Spiritomb, which is the only reason that the the fusion build started taking popularity was the introduction of Fettered and Misfortune Spiritomb. Mm -hmm. But now there is a way around that with this build that you mentioned, the hybrid build, having that fusion energy that blocks the Fettered and Misfortune ability. Uh, but in this matchup, not, th not too much to worry about there. So uh, we'll have full reign over those Genesect draws. Yeah, and Ethan's gone in strong with a nice full board. Exactly what Mew's wanting to do. A Genesect in the active isn't ideal, but at the end of the day, is it that damaging right now? I wouldn't have said so. Ethan knows that he can't get launch and attack this turn. Not a meaningful one anyway. I mean, oh, saying that, actually... It, there is a world <laughs> where Ethan could escape rope and they he could KO the Frigibacks with a Mu V. Oh, yes, because with the two fusion energy in the deck. Oh, and this is the spicy part of Ethan's deck. He plays Grabber. Oh, my, and what a turn to get it. It's going to force uh, the two pieces of Backscalibur off of that Irida. And even with Ooh. the Iono as well. Oh, I'm putting, I Ethan thought, you know what? I don't like the look of the rest of that. I'm going to Iono that to the bottom. And it just gives Ethan full control. And this is one of those unspoken benefits of any card that makes you look at the opponent's hand to do the action. So with Grabber, obviously putting the Pokemon to the bottom of the deck is great. But actually, the knowledge you gain from seeing that hand is amazing. It's so, so true. I couldn't have said it better myself. The, like, grab as a card we haven't been able to feature yet. But honestly, I think it's a great addition in this deck. Well, the Alyssa Sparkle won't be possible, but oh. close to it with the, uh, the fusion energy there and getting the Frigibacks into the active. Of course, rather have the Frigibacks in the active than the Shen Pao. Yeah, absolutely. And it might just force Jacob to have to use more resources to get Shen Pao back into the active. Um, and with the Alyssa's spot... Uh, with the Iono, sorry. Obviously, maybe the hand won't be so favorful, but there is at least one energy as we move over to their turn. Well, knowing that there were two Irida in that first hand that's on the bottom of the deck, we'll be hoping there's not one available in the hand, but we'll see what happens here. The Shivery Chill, that will shuffle the deck up a little bit, but no uh, draw support in play, no Bidoof or Radiant Greninja available just yet. Uh, so we'll need to start stabilizing this board state to get as many options out there and available to get this game going. Yeah, we. The nice thing is Jacob still does have the the sort of the world is their oyster still at this point. The main thing that Chen Pao needs to function is a Chen Pao and a Frigibax to begin with. Hopefully making the sword and the axe combo in the end with the Backscalibur and Chen Pao together. And that's really all they need to really get a race on against Mew. And I think that's what it is with, with this matchup. It is a race. 
And I think at this stage as well, you don't need to rush this first knockout because you, you want to be knocking out the Mu Max. You want to get two Mu Max knockouts and then call it a day there. You don't want to be worrying about knocking out two prizes early on. And so actually off this Irida, I wouldn't be surprised if we see the stability of the board being prioritized as opposed to getting that back scalloper down yeah. to try and get this first attack off. I think that is such an apt comment. It's so true. Jacob knows they don't need to rush this. Their prize, re their prize trade is better off taking the back seat right now, like you say, and taking two lots of three prizes rather than an awkward two prize now, then a three prize, then a potential another two prize. Like, it's just not worth it for the amount of resources that you could have in being able to concealed cards and have two Fridgy backs. So you're definitely going to be able to get that back Scalibur later. You're not afraid of missing it. Yeah, Shen Pao often worried about a lot of decks because of the fact they can take out two Fridgy backs in the same turn. Whereas with Mew, you know it's only going to be taking one Pokemon each turn, one knockout each turn. They're going to be trying to get the Shen Pao's because it's the quickest way to victory. But ultimately, that rigid board state is going to be very hard to stop a return knockout on a Mew VMAX. And so the disruption from Ethan is going to be key here. Absolutely. And hopefully thing cards like Grabber will help him to slow Jacob down enough that they stay ahead. So here comes the Mew VMAX, discarding a Fusion Strike energy, knowing that it's unlikely they're going to need it. Uh, it's unlikely Jacob's going to be playing any uh, Path to the Peak. Ethan's in full control of their own card draw. Yeah, and Spiritomb is everywhere right now, but I wonder how many people have cut Spiritomb mm. knowing that the fusion energy is in the Mew anyway. Yes. Obviously, it does help in other matchups, can help against Charizard, can help against Snorlax, uh, block Snorlax. You know, there's lots of ways it can help. But we do see there the Judge available, Ooh. which could be a huge opportunity to disrupt that hand of Jacob that was getting a, a little bit large uh, for Ethan's liking. Yeah, power tablet down, so already increasing the Mew VMAX's attack power by 30 this turn, offsetting a minus 20 from the double turbo energy. And is that, I believe there's a box of disaster on the Mew VMAX as well, which makes it a little bit easier for Ethan to return KO if Mew VMAX is one hit KO'd, which is Chen Pao's um, prerogative as we've, as we've established. Oh, it loves a three prize. <laughs> it does, it loves to eat them up. Well, slowing down a little bit here, and that's part of Mew's game plan, being yep. able to disrupt and gain a few turns back through that disruption. But a quick two prize knockout there, and that puts Ethan in the lead, just mm -hmm. hoping that a return knockout is not available off that judge. Oh, and honestly, <laughs> the hand is looking a bit bad. There's bit no rough. other word for it. You know what? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say it. it's not bad ideal. <laughs> oh, that was delightful yeah that that changed a lot very that, quickly yeah, there yeah that that completely changed it um oh wow yeah, you can wowza. get an, an ultra ball and a back scalibur off that irida set up the barrel uh, the only thing missing then is a, 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 an attacker but i guess if you keep the the board very one prize focused for a turn uh it wouldn't be too bad because then you've still got a, a little bit of time <gasps> oh no Oh, a Bidoof and a Backscalibur go to the discard pile. That is no good. I guess looking for a super odd maybe there. Maybe, but energy retrieval still okay. Like they, Jacob has four energy in the discard pile, so it's not it's not a waste at this stage of the game. I mean, getting the Backscalibur going, what advantage of having a Backscalibur in play is that if they go for the knockout on it, then they're not disrupting your hand. Mm. If they're not disrupting your hand, then you still keep everything you got going. So um, sometimes the advantage of a powerful Pokemon on the bench is when you know that the boss's order is the only way to get around it, you do get to keep your resources and keep growing that hand uh, into all the options needed late game. Yeah, and ho I mean, there's, there's a world where a Chen Pao could could happen this turn as well but I just don't know if it's too much of a stretch, but I can't see any valuable Greninja. I don't think there's a Shen Pao in the deck because one oh, was no. discarded off the Pokestop, one oh, was knocked out, was. and I believe one is prized. Oh my goodness gracious. You're right. You're absolutely right. And so there isn't one available. I don't know what, uh, yeah. What you do in that setting? You need that super rod to get it back. I'm not sure what I would be aiming for here personally. I think just, trying to 
manage your resources well enough until you're able to locate another fearsome attacker. I mean, if you use the Greninja this turn, you could start setting up some damage in play, maybe. But yeah, just trying to get that hand down as, as small as go. possible. Rare so, candy. Rare Candy. Battle VIP. Irida. One more. Ooh. Oh, I didn't. Was it Earthen, Earthen Vessel? Vessel? So, not going to be able to necessarily get the Shen Pao knockout here. But we can Greninja. Yeah, and that would reset the box of disaster, so it wouldn't take effect. But yeah, just going to be retreating into that Iron Bundle and passing. Oh, oh. No, that is not fabulous. But on the positive side, we don't have any two prize Pokemon. So I think Ethan's just kind of free to do as they wish. If I were Ethan, I think I'd want to try and maybe stop the card draw at yeah. this point and, and aim for Bibarel if I can. Yeah, I think the Backscalibur is the, the obvious target because you're like, right, they can't then do everything they want to do. But with the Frigibacks down, you're not completely denying her that opportunity. But you're right, the Barrel will be a great target here. And I believe there's some bosses' orders in that hand. Mm -hmm. So potential to make that possible. I think the fact that... Oh. I think the fact that... Um, that Jacob didn't do anything on that turn, really. They did just pass. It does signify to Ethan that Jacob is digging for something and didn't get it. And if that is the case, taking away their card draw, their prime card draw, with really not many ways to replace it, I think that, that that's what really signifies that was the key, that yeah. a player has kind of done their studying. They've played this game for a long time and they have taken the tell of knowing, ah, my opponent couldn't do anything. Do you know what could have been interesting that last turn was a Greninja to set up a potential Iron Hands. Ooh, that could have been that fun. would have been nice. On a Genesect, on a Genesect. maybe. <gasps> that, that could would have, have been, been fun. Lovely. That could but, have been fun. I mean, it's, it's easy to say that, but that's still asking quite a lot down the line to it get is. an Iron Hands and a Gust <laughs> against one of the most disruptive decks in the format. But um, what we do see is oh, the, we can dream. the discarded <laughs> boss's orders from earlier will be going straight back into that deck, and that will be dreamy for later on mm -hmm. when those draws require more disruption and more Gust. Yeah, I think Mew is sitting on quite the max miracle of, uh, of plays there, making sure that everything is back in the deck for Ethan to make sure that they're going to be able to stick this game out no matter what. You see that they're not underestimating Chen Pao. They know that Chen Pao is a deck that can't, can come back from the brink. Mm -hmm. It can just go, and I'm set up again. Fish. <laughs> yes, and you can see there the Backscalibur was the target on this occasion. Ah, there we go. So I guess um, concerned about the potential for a Shen Pao easy access, but there was an Irida in hand. That was one of the draws that was unplayable because the support had been used. Yeah. So another Backscalibur is possible here, but without the Shen Pao, as we mentioned, really needs to find that Super Rod. And often Irida, you can't find both the, the Super Rod to get the Shen Pao back in deck and the, <laughs> the Shen Pao. So we'll need to try and find another way to get that. And with Path to the Peak finally being played, Shivery Chill isn't going to be chilling much more. Or the concealed cards. No, absolutely. So the Jacob now has a few extra little hurdles to jump across, but it's not impossible. Oh, I think that's just going to be a scoop and go to the next game. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, it was just a slow start, really, wasn't it? And unfortunately... Um, Chen Pao had a bit of a meltdown without its Backscalibers in, oh, on yes. time. And it I mean, it's, it's a tough old matchup once the disruption starts kicking in. Yeah. I mean, the, the barrel was in play and even that draw was not enough to get them out of it. But Ethan just showing exactly why Mew V Max is such a good pick right now. There are some tougher matchups floating around the hall. You know, oh, those yeah. Roaring Moons, the Charizards out there can be quite tricky. But even then, a Mew's disruption can make it beat any deck in the room. Do not get me started on the panic he was having about Roaring Moon. <laughs> Apps do not get me started. They're okay. everywhere. <laughs> he, uh, honestly, he was like, okay, I'm having a bit of a moment about okay. Roaring Moon. I was like, no, 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 it's okay. Stop it, forget about it. You're gonna do well, you do well with Mew. You're good at Mew. You know how to beat Roaring Moon. Just do it. <laughs> I think the key there, you said, he's good at Mew. And we could see exactly why Ethan knows the deck inside out uh, and refined the list. Yes. And that's the key, is when you come to a big event like this, it's, it's not just about picking the right deck for the room. It's about no. picking the deck that's right for you and playing yes. the deck that you're most familiar with. And I've seen a lot of players this weekend, especially as, as Mew is nearing its end of it its is. journey in, in our is. standard format. A lot of people are giving it one last run 
as it has been such a powerhouse in the format for the last few years. Well, it's the current world champion deck. Yeah. So, you know, we previous could, Liverpool champion. Yeah, and previous Liverpool champion, you know, could can you strike again? It loves doing it. We've had it as many European regional champions, many finalists, many top eights. And despite the strongest and most popular deck in the format right now, with Charizard being a big dark type attacker, uh, it does seem to still be surviving. And now we get to see a, another game starting here with Jacob Shempo on the active, getting that shivery chill off. But is the hand able to set up? There is some cards there to be able to set some Fridgy backs up onto the bench. Nest ball in hand, Fridgy backs in hand. And we'll see a stronger start here for Jacob. Hopefully they'll be able to overcome the Mew Mutiny this time and get a much stronger start. But as you say, it looks like they're off to uh, quite the flyer as two energy, concealed cards. I mean, that's I, the I, dream. Personally, it's the dream. Yeah, exactly. Right. As, as a Palkia player, yes. I can tell you Shivery Chill into concealed cards Oof. is a very frequent out to what exactly what you need. You, you go, I really need a supporter for turn. Let me just get some energy out of the deck. Let me conceal cards away. Oh, and there it is. It's yeah. a crazy how thinning two energy out and then drawing two Makes is a such difference. a good kind of oh, <gasps> battle VIP pass off that exact scenario. Oh, we love to see it. You were so right, Mike. The seasoned Palkia player <laughs> giving us the hot tips just before they happen. <laughs> I mean, there's not many combinations where you thin two cards you don't want to see and then see two cards that you might want to see. Yeah. Um, and it is a great little combination. It's why we see Radiant Greninja featuring so many decks. Of course, can be an attacker here for Shen Pao, Backscalibur, mm. but in a lot of decks, like Gradovoir, yeah. can't even attack and it's just that powerful having concealed cards from turn one. Yeah, I suppose for a Chen Pao player, it is a snow-brainer to go for that concealed card Shivery Chill combo. That was cold. I think every single game we would see it multiple times because it is that good. And a great starting board this time round. The dream start, but of course the dream card to start with for Ethan as a Battle VA P-Pass will begin the flurry of setting up that board state. Yeah, that's what Mew loves to do. We always say Mew doing Mew things in our household, and it's because Mew does what Mew wants uh, most of the time. And that's the beauty of the deck and why a lot of people fell in love with it really early on is just the consistency is phenomenal it's key and hopefully uh, it'll continue to to shine throughout today one genesect star i wonder if ethan had another ball search or whether he's just going for that draw power oh not an ideal first hand there you know no it's not it's not great is it i mean you known to be one of the decks that plays the most games of pokemon because it sets up so consistently and right now we're seeing, I mean, a reasonable setup, I think you could say. Yeah. Um, but not the ideal setup. So we'll be looking to try and thin that hand down as much as possible. But realistically, there's not going to be a huge amount of draw this turn. No, I think it's going to be a draw two. I think there's one card left in his hand now. So, yeah, a little bit. A little bit, little bit shaky. A little bit shaky start. But Got Mew the can, energy. You can still bring it back. There's energy. There's two Mews and a Genesect. So that's all you sometimes need, really. that's all you need. Yeah. <laughs> it's not not, the, not ideal, but it, it, it is something to yeah. get going. Oh, You're no, in the it's game. For one. It's for one. Oh, oh, gosh. Mew doing Mew things. Mew doing Mew things. Oh, and an Ultra Ball. Um, of course. And a, and a Pramomatic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. Oh, good work, Mew. Yeah. I mean, if, J if Jacob was allowed his off the concealed cards, then we'll give Ethan a, a, a Genesect off a, a one. Oh, I mean, Ultra Ball is such a good hit off of, um, off of a Genesect when you're really just trying to find one or two cards because not only do you find the next Genesect, but you thin your hand down so you can really start growing that hand size, growing mm -hmm. the amount of cards you see. And this is exactly... We, we thought this was a rough start. Honestly, now look at yeah. it. I, that, that's the thing. That's why Mew's a, a world champion and a previous Liverpool My champion, goodness. right? You, you just can't deny it. And a Forest Seal Stone, because why not, right? At this and a stage. And for next turn, Ultra Ball for next oh, turn. God, no, he's going for it. He's just going to do it. You don't, you don't need the Ultra Ball when you've oh, got the Mew VMAX anyway. And that was some funky dice work. Went on the deck and then off and then on. <laughs> <laughs> How about that, though? And then the Kramomatic heads, just to, to add to it. You've got the energy of the Mew VMAX ready for next turn. Is he going to? Yeah, he's going to take Path. I like that. That is fun. I like that this early, knowing that Jacob hasn't had a chance to get much energy with Chen Pao in their hand yet. There's none in discard pile. Greninja won't be able to. Concealed cards, and we know how well that worked last turn. 
Well, we'll see how that, that works out next turn, but part of the peak, mm. the best bit about it is the Forest Seal Stone is available to get the Lost Vacuum next turn so we can continue that drawing. If not, this could be the huge disruption. Oh, well, there it goes. Oh, but, <laughs> but you still get to keep the Forest Seal Stone for, the, for later, so it yeah. worked out yeah. all right in the it end. It worked out great. And, uh, oh, a much better Pokestop than we saw last game. Shame about Iron Bundle, because I really love that addition. Um, was it Azul who for, who we first saw with an Iron Bundle, I think, in, yep. their, in their list? So and I've much always, success. <laughs> yeah, I, I've always really liked the inclusion person. I think it's fun. Um, I think Shen Pao as a deck really struggles with the, the speed of the format right now. Obviously, for Jacob, finding success going 501, you know, against the right of opposition, it can be a, a great deck. And I think right now in the format, there is a lot of big Pokemon to knock out with a lot of hit points. Mm -hmm. And there's also a lot of decks with small Pokemon, which you can knock out with the Greninja. And then the Iron Hands towards the end of the game can really start taking those prize cards quickly on the uh, low HP Pokemon. So it does, in theory, sit nicely in the format, but it, it can be hard uh, with how aggressive a lot of decks are right now. I think you're right. I think Chen Pao genuinely, I think it has its shot at this event. I think if a Chen Pao is going to go far, it's going to be here. I think it really does shine in a meta, which is a little bit messy. Uh, where we have a lot of single prize decks, like you say, but also a lot of decks with some larger Pokemon. Chen Pao can do, it, can do it all. It's honestly, it's worst enemy is itself, right? 100%. And we can see the, the Barrel in play, the Backscalibur in play, energy all over the board, and a lot of thinning has happened. So now we are set up in the prime Shen Pao position. And it's at this point, if Shen Pao can win this game, it shows exactly why it's so good into decks like Mew. Because once you're set up, there's not really much most decks can do against you. No. The, you, if you keep the momentum and the pace of the game going, the you know the best somebody else can do is then it's try to outspeed you. But if they just can't, then that's all she wrote. Chen Pao's got this. The worst part about Chen Pao when it, when it just doesn't happen is just if you're that few energy off. But in this instance, Jacob could technically go for a... Um, for a 2-2-2 prize map and go for a couple yeah. of Genesects if they did want to avoid the Mews because they've managed to start with a Mew V KO. I, it's an interesting line. It could happen. Could also attack into a Mew V Max for almost enough to knock it out then finish it off with an Iron Hand to go for a 2-4 oh. line. Oh, that, that would be lovely. That could be fun. But as we mentioned, a stable board state here for the Shen Pao. Having two Shen Pao, a Backscalibur, a Frigibax, the Barrel, and the Greninja all on board. That is the dream board state into pretty much every matchup. Uh, even if we do see a disruption uh, like Judge work well, we see the part of the peak t come down. There is so many ways to get out of that with the Irida, the Pokestops, and uh, the Barrel that it's not going to be too much of a worry here for Jacob. No, Bibarel makes you, like, path-proof, right? So it, that's the bit I really love about it. But here we go with Mew doing more Mew things, and Ethan's taking that fresh hand. Having already judged, they can grab her, but, you know, nothing to take. Oh, Ooh, uh, there okay. it is. I lie. A <laughs> to but the knowledge. bottom. But, but knowledge. knowledge is key. But, but in this instance, Ethan can't do anything about it <laughs> because he's already judged. Yeah. But it's nice for him to know what the what his line of play should be. Yeah, we'll be seeing uh, the knockout here. As we mentioned, the Mew Max can only take one knockout a turn, can't start spreading out those knockouts. So we'll be aiming to just take out Shen Pals every turn if possible. No part of the peak in play. So the Shivery Chill is possible and a lot of thinning can happen right here. Yeah, I, I imagine our line of play will very much see Shivery Chill. Now get Greninja, some energy. Conceal cards possibly. Oh, Essentially, yeah. just Jacob just needs enough to knock out a Genesect and then a boss. But if not, it, it is a lot of energy to knock out a Mew Max, and it's it's whether he has access to that right now. So what six energy? So uh, just the one in deck it seems, and with the uh, Irido probably trying to get the superior energy retrieval here. Yes. Yeah, that yes, would make sense. Yep. And then that would be the, the six yep, energy the required. Six. There is one already in play on the Greninja, so yep. still room to go for that concealed cards. But I guess if you if you do discard all of the non-energy cards in your hand, put them in play with the Backscalibur, then the barrel, you're going to be seeing a lot of, a lot more uh, after 
that is played. So Shen Pao comes down. Super energy retrieval. And then you're literally going to see five fresh cards afterwards after this Bibaro has been used. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. You cannot go wrong with that. Exactly yeah. what you want to see. An empty hand. Oh, that was lovely too. A masterclass of how the deck should be played, how it can play if everything goes well. Mm -hmm. Obviously, poker stop can be quite frustrating sometimes. It seems like Jacob uh, enjoys that card. I think you have to play it. It's the only yes. way to really keep the deck consistent. Um, yeah. But you can see every single time he does it, there's a little thumbs up. <laughs> there we go. Poker stop doing poker stop things. But another two, uh, three prize cards for Jacob, leaving just the one remaining. So any knockout next turn will be enough to take the game. Whereas for Ethan, four prizes still to get. A lot to be done. It is. There is a whole lot to be done. I suppose what's Ethan's game plan here? Disrupt as much as possible, take out a Chen Pao and pray. I mean, if you're feeling feeling risky, there is a world after this I know where you'll be thinking, they're going to just get back up with the barrel anyway. So you've just got to hope that off the back of the um, the barrel, they don't find access to the superior energy retrieval, any of the other stuff we spoke about. But all the energy right now is in the discard pile, except for the one in Greninja in play. Yeah. So, you know, this disruption should, in theory, ask a lot of questions of Jacob. Yeah, getting rid of the Pokestop as well might be big, because, again, if Jacob can't access those superior energy retrievals, and maybe it's just too much, but we do still have... Oh, he grabbed it to see the one card in Jacob's hand, <laughs> and I think it was a Pokestop still. Well, I mean, that, that means that the replacing of the stadium won't necessarily work. No, but I suppose that pushes Ethan to not have to worry about it too much. Like, there's no point in putting a path down if he can't, because, well, it's not gonna it's not going to stick. No, 100%. So at this stage, got to hope that off that barrel, nothing too good is found. Otherwise, Ethan is staring down a Shen Pao deck ready to take its victory. But this is exactly what Mew does well. It disrupts mm -hmm. and it stays big in the active. Mew VMAX, 310 hit points, can be tough to knock out. So he's just going to hope to get this knockout here, survive a turn, and finish the game next time. So... It is one of the things that Shen Pao does best, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, the barrel is such a big part of the, of the game plan. Yeah, gigantic. Ooh. Just wondering what to get off the forest seal here. I think, honestly, he, I think what he wants isn't there. <laughs> I think he's, he's very likely looking for one of the two paths of the peaks that's in the uh, prize cards regardless. Yeah, because I guess if you put the path down, they bump it. Mm -hmm. You then might be able to get a path next turn if they can't quite get the knockout. So you just want to start forcing them to bounce those stadiums as soon as possible. But there we go. Okay. Knockout the Shen Pao. He takes, yeah, one of those paths, but it's almost a little too late because if, if Jacob doesn't win this turn, Ethan's got it in the bag. In a weird way, not putting a path to peak in play means that's one less card that Jacob can thin from his hand. That is so true. So we'll see whether that, that comes true here. <laughs> Jacob gets to have a look at the Bibara on the prize cards. <laughs> yeah, that is the last one. <laughs> Cheeky peek. Oh, what's that? Oh, don't need it. No, don't care. Oh, there's one superior energy retrieval. Okay. So I mean, that would be five energy. Yeah, that would be. So that would potentially allow for some more draw as well, which would then maybe get access to the next... Superior energy, energy retrieval. retrieval, yeah, so... There's a super rod in the deck somewhere because it was taken off the prizes earlier. And we've got the... Earthen earth vessel. vessel. So, okay, Few this outs. is looking possible. Here we go. Just going to triple check. Oh, there was one in the deck. Oh, there was. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we missed it. <laughs> Game a... three, let's go. So the six energy exactly needed for the knockout, available for the Shen Pao. And that's exactly why when that stable board state is set up, you draw out the barrel, you pretty much every time find your way to victory. So Jacob, a masterclass in Shen Pao, and we'll be seeing whether the final game can go his way or whether Ethan can bounce back and disrupt his way to victory. Certainly shows that not even Mew can be, uh, can be that warm against the frostbite. Oh, 100%. I think that's where you saw the part of the peak being the attempt, because Shivery Chill, if there's any energy left in deck, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what it was. Maybe it was in the hand from last turn, so when it got ironed to the bottom, maybe. maybe that was the case. But yeah, you know, 
Thinning the energy out into the discard pile, but leaving some in the deck is the key balance of a top Shen Pao player, and we saw exactly that from Jacob. Oh, it was beautiful, and I think that that just goes to show that Chen Pao shouldn't be disregarded in this meta. A lot of people, if you ask their, if you ask their honest opinion, just like yes, no answer as to whether Chen Pao is a good or a bad deck, I bet you like most players would say it's a bad deck, but I don't believe that. I think it's a deck with a lot of potential. The unfortunate part is that you do have to, you do have to make changes that that make you rely on consistency because consistency is so important. I think one of the big things for Shen Pao, a lot of people forget, is that stable board states are harder to set up than people realize. Having that same board state we saw there with the barrel, the two back Scalibur lines ready to go, mm -hmm. a Shen Pao ready for next turn so that even if they get the knockout and they disrupt your hand, you've got everything on board ready to go to get the next big play. So that's the key to victory. And I think a lot of people misunderstand the complexity of this deck. Yo. Jake's got a nice starting hand. Yeah, is that two battle VIP pass in there? It very much is two battle VIP pass. Is that, is that another Cramomatic there from Ethan? Yeah. He loves it. He's so good at those Cramomatics. <laughs> Not luck based at all. <laughs> Some people just get it all, don't they? <laughs> yeah, the first time I ever played Mu V Max, I wasn't sure it was the deck for me because I rolled 17 tails <gasps> uh, out of 21. What? And I went, I don't know if I like this deck anymore. <laughs> But then I, I quickly returned back to it, realizing that it is an amazing deck and it does work so, so well. And I think you can see exactly why that's the case. Every game it seems to set up, every time you feel like it's out of it, it's it finds up. a way to grow that board. Yep. And going first is optimal for both players. So Ethan, of course, was like, yep, yeah, no, I'm taking that first evolution of the game. I'm going first, please. <laughs> yeah, and you can see all those draws required here. Might even be able to get a path to finish off the whole play just going to work Ooh, out that whether that's the right option beautiful but it's whether you save them he runs three path in total so he's had two prizes in the last two oh, games yes this time none of them are prized so we'll find them a little bit easier and maybe we'll see more use in them as well maybe that that will be maybe that'll be clearer this time and more clean cut and we'll see them come out at more ideal timings because again this is all about timing pokemon isn't necessarily about having about being you know a ferocious player about getting those ko's timing is so much of it it's like an elegant dance now one thing that's really interesting here a lot of people won't fully understand the 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 process for ethan there when he went for that feather ball you think why don't you just hold that feather ball for mm -hmm. next turn but by using the feather ball it didn't change the number of cards in his hand he wanted the movie max next turn anyway but reduces the likelihood of him top decking it yep and he knows he's playing against a deck that has next to no hand disruption if at all uh, shen pao doesn't have the room for that anymore so little decisions like that ethan has taken one card out of his deck to potentially increase the odds of him getting what he needs next turn that alone is the difference between players like him and a lot of the the rest of the hall yeah absolutely and that's why these two players sit on 501 currently and you know what jacob said it's snow time and we're gonna get cracking on with two battle vip pass making those key early decisions as we've discussed there's a very clear-cut, perfect Chen Pao board state for turn one, right? Yeah, double Frigibax, Bidoof, Greninja, and a Shen Pao. Unfortunately, in this particular matchup, that Manaphy is going to be clogging up the bench a little bit, as you do not want to be seeing that there. So the Manaphy disrupting the dream board state, but on this occasion, I'm sure there'll still be plenty to be getting on with as we see the Earthen Vessel just getting some more energy out of the deck without the Shen Pao in the active. You know, you have to do it the old-fashioned way through yeah. through your trainer support, but Shen Pao will be ready and available for next turn. But uh, again, uh, Earthen Vessel being a newer addition to the Shen Pao uh, magazine of different cards and techs, I really like it. I really like the backup plan. Uh, and another card which we can get off of Pokestop reliably, it's, oh, well, I don't have a Chemp out, but it's okay, because I can use this item to do exactly what it does after I've discarded something. And also off of Irida too. Uh-huh. And, and on this particular turn, there is a world where we see Jacob not putting a two-prizer no! in play, uh, and that would be ideal, because that would mean the, the board state would remain in his favor. We've seen the other two games. Ethan's gone for the Shen Pao, Shen Pao, Shen Pao, mm -hmm. getting that 2-2-2 prize map. 
Whereas if no, no Shen Pao is put in play, that will mean no two prize turn here. But Ethan might be able to disrupt that hand and get rid of that Shen Pao yeah. that was taken out with the Irida. Oh, poor Biberel. He ended up getting <laughs> Pokestopped. Oh, my. Pokestop. I, I feel like someone spins the Pokestop and it turns out Biberel was on the back and he's like, no! <laughs> Flung into the discard pile. Uh, yep, you were quite right. Ethan goes ahead, evolves one Mew into Mew VMAX and goes straight in for the judge to disrupt that hand, saying, you know what? If I'm only going to take a single prize card here, I'm going to take it in style. And the Manaphy is not the ideal target here because that would potentially free up the board state. I guess the Bidoof would be the dream, but you're not going to be able to gust anything up, so you're going to just have to rely on the escape rope putting up something that's useful on the bench. Yeah, I'm not sure, though. I, I feel like... I don't know. The Bidoof, the Bidoof, I don't know if it's the ideal target. Seeing the Bibarel go into the discard pile, knowing there's only two in the deck, I'm kind True. of like, would you then go for a Frigibax? I don't know. It's I mean, a tough call. Maybe at this stage, it's not even possible. You no, know? no. As much as Mew draws through all the resources, you don't always get exactly what you need unless you... Oh, you tell that to my Mew opponents, please. <laughs> unless you get a Cramomatic or a Forest Seal, then you get to choose exactly what you want. Well, but uh, on this, this occasion, just a knockout to get the, the ball rolling could be quite useful. We'll see if that does happen. Again, like I said earlier, it's important that in this matchup, both players understand that this is a race. And whoever gets that race started can sometimes just keep pulling ahead. Now, the only thing that I'd be wary of is activating your opponent's custom catcher. Uh, uh, yeah, counter catchers. Sorry. Counter catcher, yeah. yeah. Counter catchers. I mean, we, we saw one get discarded, and I think the Shen Pao list typically only plays one if it does. Yeah. So maybe that's a safety of this knockout here. But I Ooh. think, honestly, Judge Path is a combination as old as they both existed. Such a great... Uh, combo piece. Typically it was done with Arceus, but mm. then Mew said, I can do that a little bit better than you as I have the <laughs> consistency around it. So Judge Path, Mew's greatest asset here to disrupt the Shen Pao list. Yeah, Mew was like, I can do that. I can do that too. Wait a minute. I can really do that. Whoa. <laughs> and yeah, even the, the Path to the Peak, which, which you think, well, Mew, oh, Mew's natural enemy at, at the start when, when a lot of Mew techs began to, to surface. And, and here it is being like, no, actually, I've got used to it now. I'm so used to it, in fact. Popping it in the deck. This is interesting here because we've got the Irida, but we don't have all the pieces to get the Shen Pao attack oh. off here. So there's not enough energy in the discard, so Superior Energy Retrieval doesn't really get you going there. But you need to start drawing into some of those combo pieces before you use that Irida in order to get the other pieces to get that attack off right here. There's a lot of card draw left, though, especially being able to bump that path straight away. There, there is certainly plenty to go yet, so it could still happen. I think it's just the fact that it's so early on in the game and Ethan's got the ball rolling, hasn't left a Mew without the V... Oh, well, they've left a Mew V on bench, but again, like, can't boss... Irida. Shen Pao off of that draw could be huge. As that's going to be the attacker needed here to knock out the Mew VMAX. So can get an attack off now, but will they be able to get enough energy in play to be able to do so? So there's two in the discard pile. There'd be two off Shivery Chill. There's one in hand. There'd need to be one for the re retreat as well. Yep. Potentially off the poker stop, get some more <sighs> discarded. That's what, I was gonna, that's what I was thinking next is that Pokest I suppose you would retreat the Greninja, Shivery Chill, then Pokestop, so that you've yep. got maximum chances of getting something desirable rather than just putting energy that could have been in your hand straight into the discard pile. So yeah. I, I feel guess like the Pokestop now nice. could get a rare candy. Maybe. Which then means the Irida can get any item you want. So this is the whole advantage of Irida is it's the final pieces you need to the puzzle yeah. you can do all the other drawing to try and get the other bits and then Irida kind of cleans up the missing parts of that puzzle here we go no <laughs> oh oh I can't see what the other cards are because they've discarded them off to the side Backscalibur, Backscalibur. and oh. it it looked like oh. there we go and the An ultra, ultra ball goes to the hand but the Backscalibur and oh no that really is the drawback of Pokestop and if Lady Luck does not swing in your favour, it can really be off-putting. You, I mean, you can see you can see that how jarring that was, for I, Jacob. I guess, 
Yeah, yeah, the ultra ball first here to sort of kick off the Baxcalibur search, maybe getting another Shen Pao. Um, but no, I don't know if they're going to be able to get an attack off here. It would be quite the reach. Um, and this is the other problem as well. When you've got things like Ultra Ball and Superior Energy Retrieval needed in your hand, that's a lot of um, a lot of discard. And obviously it's great alongside the barrel to be able to draw more cards, but it can be quite tricky sometimes if you're if you're having to navigate through a hand where you've only got three cards you can discard, but you have to discard four. It's a dangerous combo, and I think Ethan's very aware that this is Jacob's only BBRL. This is Jacob's only backscalibur of the game. It's very likely that's the case until they super rod. So that, we'll that knowledge, that knowledge can be quite scary. There might be a very tempting Chen Pao in the active, but I, to me, there's a more tempting backscalibur on the bench. I do believe we saw a Super Rod getting discarded. I might be wrong with that. There's a Super Rod in the prize cards. That's right. There is a Super Rod there. And there's one in the discard. So no access to the Super Rods there. But the Superior Energy Retrieval. And they will be able to get the knockout here as all six energy comes Ooh. down. Shen Pao knocking out the Mu V Max. Wow. And suddenly, Jacob, all of that searching, all of that reaching, all of that draw has got him in a position where he's just about been able to get the Shen Pao knockout. And Ethan, now massively behind, has to try and stabilize, disrupt, and get some knockouts. I don't know. I mean, if, he, if he's realized that, you know, that Baxcalibur went to the discard pile, it might be too much of a stretch for Jacob to get another one in play directly after they might choose to go for a boss here. They do have a couple in hand or whether they try for the disruption. It's it, it's such a difficult call. I don't know if I'd be able to make it, but that's why I'm not the Mew player and Ethan's over there. Yeah, I mean, there's the Baxcalibur discard of the Pokestop did uh, create a reaction out of Jacob. So yeah. definitely highlighted it, made Ethan aware. It's like, oh, that's unlucky. So now Ethan's probably going to be thinking, hmm, Maybe that's the route I have to go down here. But the Super yeah. Rod was taken off the prize cards. It was, it was. So we know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he'll be hunting for a grabber or something so that he can get that knowledge and be like, right, what have you got in there? <laughs> There's also potential to try and get that one prize turn back to, you know, go for a psychic leap this turn so you only leave two prizes in play. Yeah, yeah. Make sure that Jacob can't take the win next turn. But yeah, Ooh, we'll here see. Here it comes. Ooh. Yeah, boss for the Baxcalibur. Yeah, I mean, why disrupt the hand when there is literally only one card left yeah. in it? Yeah, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, no, like, oh, no. Oh, I thought, oh, they had plus the three prize cards. Oh, yes, of course, <laughs> of course. Yeah, so only, only four cards. You're not going to get much value out of the disruption there. Um, and, uh, yep, so so you may as well just go for it and get that uh, knockout here. Disrupting Back. the card draw by taking away Pokestop. Okay, we'll see. Ethan's run out of card draw himself. Just going to take the KO. Ooh. Yeah, it's not a psychic leap. And if it is, it's not going back in. So, well, it can't have been a psychic leap when it knocked out. So, not a psychic leap this turn. Big turn here for Jacob. Huge. Can get it at this stage. Can get that knockout. We'll be getting the Super Rod off to get the back Scalibers back. wonder if any energy will go back with it. I mean, the counts will dictate that, but two Baxcalibur and a Frigibax are all going to be going back in. And then it'll have the draw off of Biberel and the Shivery Chill from Shen Pao to be able to grab two energy out of the deck. Concealed cards. Yep, we can keep going. The Pokestop <laughs> might be gone, but there's plenty of other options right now. Yep, so that's going to be a barrel for two, I believe, gestured. Shen Pao Irida. That'll be the one. That'll do it. That'll do it. I think there's a superior energy retrieval in hand, too. It's just whether there's enough cards to discard after all of this, I suppose. And I mean, then... is there enough energy? So there's... Oh, there's another super rod. Ooh. Is there enough... I'm it's not a superior sure. energy retrieval in hand. There is a rare candy in hand as well. So off of this era, they can get the super rod plus the Baxcalibur and now get enough energy back in. So I believe that will be enough... So Superior Energy Retrieval, get those there. Super Rod in hand. And then the two energy off the Shivery Chill, yeah, plus the four go. from the Superior Energy Retrieval. And gets that there, and that's going to be oh, six. Oh, and there it is! 
<laughs> Jacob showing exactly why Shen Pao is one of those decks we shouldn't forget about. No, let's not underestimate decks that have been around for a little while now. And oh, he looks exhausted as he should. That was a really tough matchup and very well played by both players, giving us a true masterclass. But unfortunately, Mew got knocked out cold by Shen Pao. And Ethan played very well. The disruption, not quite enough. Not quite enough to swing it back in favor. And it is a tough matchup. Shen Pao able to take those big knockouts on three prize Pokemon with a lot of hit points, where for Mew, it can only go one at a time. And you can yeah. see it just takes a lot to do that. And you have to rely on a few turns being one back through that disruption. And it just wasn't quite enough. But Barrel, I think the MVP there. I've got to say, I think it is too. But Barrel, what a card. I think it's one of those underestimated valuable cards. And it doesn't often work in many decks because they don't thin their hands down, but in Shen Pao, fits perfectly with all of those discard synergies. Yeah, and I think that's really what elevated the play there because every time Ethan tried to disrupt them... The barrel. 